Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Um, this is my 12th story um, in the sequence. Uh, I'm trying to do one every day. They're all 1,000 words long and they're all based on five random words, as I've probably said about a thousand times, based on um, yeah five, five words chosen randomly from an online text generator. The words for this story are... Anyway, um, Yes, I hope you'll enjoy this one. It's a bit different from my last two offerings. Uh, I like a bit of contrast. This one is called Maths Rocks. She'd been staring at the stupid triangle for half an hour. 15 minutes left and Emily still had eight questions. How could you calculate the area with just one angle and the length of two sides? Something to do with sines or tangents? Speaking of tangents, Emily's thoughts kept drifting off to her hot date. Brian had summed up the courage to ask her out. She'd been hinting for weeks. Why were boys so useless? He was awkward, kept droning on about bands she'd never heard of. Television, The Associates, Suicide, cheerful name. It didn't matter. He was good looking, funny, and he was in year 12. Two whole years above her. Let Susan Radcliffe and her stuck up friends suck on that. Stop getting distracted, she scolded herself. Leave this one and move on. Emily looked at her mascot, guarding the byros. Andy the anteater said nothing. Like Emily, Andy looked like he would rather be anywhere else. What film had Brian chosen? Something called Dirty Dancing? He was clearly making an effort since she'd heard it was a romantic film with, well, duh, a lot of dancing in it. She was surprised he hadn't gone for Stakeout or that thriller with Kevin Costner. It proved that older boys were more sensitive. Shit, 10 minutes to go. Right, next question. Ugh, quadratic equations. If this exam got any more boring, she'd fall into a coma. Look at that swat, Deborah Henderson, putting her pens back in her pencil case already. She can't have finished. What use was any of this stuff in the real world anyhow? Focus, Emily. You know this one. She managed to get through two of the questions before something miraculous happened. An equation popped into her head, quite unbidden. Area equals AB times sin y over 2. She had made up little stories for all the equations she needed. Emily excelled at English. It had been simple to come up with a story about a girl who drank absinthe in year 2. She quickly tapped the numbers into her Casio scientific calculator and hit equals. Yes, that looked right. Emily scrawled the answer down as the bell rang and the invigilator commanded everybody to stop. She'd missed a few, but to be honest, she'd be happy with a pass. Emily liked English, history, chemistry and hockey. She despised, with a fervour verging on the religious, maths, physics, geography and, ironically, RE. Emily jumped off the bus and walked the last quarter of a mile home. She could smell the paint from the driveway. Dad was decorating. Mum had been nagging him to start for weeks, and as with everything Dad did, when he finally got around to it, he really went to town. Eggshell blue in the hall, lemon yellow in the bathroom, and for the upstairs hall, something called evening murmur. Dad was up a ladder in the living room, with all the furniture pushed into the middle of the room and dust sheeted. Hiya, she said, throwing her down her bag and coat. Well, he said, turning with paintbrush in hand. Well, what? The exam. Jesus, she'd almost forgotten. All the way home, she'd been thinking about what she might wear tonight. Stonewashed denim skirt, pink leg warmers, pink and powdered blue jacket with the sleeves rolled up, scrunchies to hold her hair back, and hoop earrings. Yeah, it was okay. Dad, it was okay. He mimicked in that irritating way. OK, good, or OK, we should be resigned to you becoming a hairdresser or a stripper. Gross. It was fine. I passed, probably. So, Dad... She used that familiar questioning tone to let him know he was about to be tapped for cash. You know I have that date tonight. Ooh, he mock-cooed. Is that with Wayne or Dwayne or Bobby? He's called Brian, and he's paying for the tickets, but sensible name. I like him already. How much? Emily calculated how much she could reasonably ask for. Ten? 
Dad pretended to have a heart attack and fall off the ladder. Such a dork. I only gave you ten last Friday. Exactly last Friday. Emily was suddenly distracted by the wall opposite the TV, where the pictures usually hung. Dad had drawn a diagonal line from top left to bottom right. Looking closer, Emily saw it was a piece of string, thumbtacked in place. What's that? He looked slightly smug as he came down the ladder to explain. Remember we had the idea of making this a feature wall? Mum couldn't decide if she wanted burnt orange or a wine red colour. Yeah, but what's the string about? I thought we'd do both. Top triangle red, bottom orange. Surprise Mum when she gets home tomorrow. She'll go apeshit, thought Emily. This has to happen. Dad, that's brilliant. Go for it. I would, but I, I don't know if I've got enough paint for the top bit. I got a wee tester, but I don't know if it'll cover it. And the shop's shut, and if I don't do it tonight... Mum will veto the hell out of it, thought Emily. It's harder too because of the lack of a right angle there, Dad said, pointing out where their weird front wall slanted in at the roof. That's what comes of living in a 1970s modernist experiment instead of a normal house, he said, ruefully, but with a kind of pride. Wait a minute, Emily smiled, seeing an opportunity. Dad, if I told you definitively whether that tin has enough paint to fill that triangle, would you give me a tenner? Dad laughed. Work that out and I'll give you 20. Ten minutes later, with the help of a protractor and a piece of folded paper for the awkward angle, plus her trusty Casio, Emily looked up in triumph. The tin says covers eight square metres. The area of that bit is 7.23333 metres. Speechless, Dad handed over the purple banknote. Maths rocks, thought Emily. There would be pina coladas at Roxy's nightclub tonight. I <sighs> quite enjoyed writing that one. It was fun. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it too. And if you did, I would love you to subscribe and maybe watch another one, as ever. Tell people about it, share it, fold it into pieces of... No, don't do that. Um, yeah, just get the word out. Uh, I will keep doing this as long as I can. And because it's fun. I, I really do think it is fun. I'm also going to try and do a little um, extra bit at some point about what I'm learning from doing this experiment because it's quite interesting the way the mind conjures up stories based on you know random suggestions. Um, I've got a few thoughts on that which I shall share but for now goodbye.